Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about return statements in C. A return statement is a special line of code that we can include in our functions, which will allow them to return information back to whoever called them. So I can write a function and I can have that function give information back to whoever called it. That could be information like the result of some operation or you know, it could be a message telling whoever called it how the function went. It could be anything like that. So I'm gonna show you guys basically how we can do that and I'll just give you an overview of like return types and all that stuff. So down here, I'm actually going to create a function and we're gonna create a function that cubes a number. So when you cube a number, generally you take it to the third power. So I could say like two raised to the third power which is the same as just saying two times two times two. This would be cubing a number, right? You're taking it to the third power. Um, so I'm gonna make a function that's gonna do that. Basically this function will accept one parameter, which is gonna be a number, and it'll cube that number. And then once it's done cubing the number, it'll give that value back to the caller. And you guys will see how that'll work. So um, I do want to point out one thing whenever we are returning values in our function. So if you're going to write a, a function that's going to return a value, you always want to put it above the function that's going to be calling it. So for example, like this main function down here, this is the first function that executes. So any code we put in here is going to get executed first. If I want to return a value with my function, I'm going to define the function here above the main method. And there's a couple reasons why we want to do that. Essentially, it'll just make sure that everything works correctly. So we want to make sure that we define this function before we actually call it down here and get a value back. So the first thing that I need to tell C when I want to create a function is what type of data I want to return. If you've been following along with this course, you'll know in the last tutorial, we use the void return type, which basically means we weren't going to return any information. But now we want to actually return information, right? So we want to cube a number. So why don't we return a double and you can put any data type here you want. You could also put like int or a character or a character array, but let's just do double and we're going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this cube and I'm going to make an open and closed parentheses. And inside of this parentheses, we're going to allow this method to, or we're going to allow this function to accept one parameter as input. So it's just going to be another double and we'll call it num. So basically what we want to do is we want to cube num and we want to give that value back to the user. So over here, I'm just going to create a variable. Um, it's just going to be another double called result and I'm going to set it equal to num times num times num. So basically this variable result now represents or now stores the cubed value of num. All we need to do to return this value now is just say return result. And this return keyword is basically going to do a couple things. The first thing it does is it breaks us out of the function. So wherever we put that return keyword, it's going to break us out of the function and it's going to return this value back to the caller. So down here, we can actually call this function. So actually what I want to do is I want to print out the answer that we get back. So I can do print F and in here, I'm just going to say, answer and we'll print out the answer. So percent F. So I'm using percent F because we're expecting to get a double back from here. Remember double is a return type. And over here I can just say cube and we'll pass in a number. Let's pass in 3.0. Essentially what's going to happen now is we're going to call this function. All this code's going to execute and this function is going to get a value back. Basically the value of cubing 3.0. So normally like in the past in this course, when we wanted to print out a number, we'd have to put like four or 76 or you know, whatever, we'd have to put a number right there. But we can just call this function because eventually this is going to get a number back anyway. So this will contain a number after the function's done being called. So I can actually just run my program now and this is gonna print out the result of cubing 3.0. So you'll see down here we get 27.0000. So three cubed is 27. Three times three is nine, nine times three, 27. So looks like our cube function works. Let's try it with another number. Why don't we do seven? So let's run this again and we get 343. I'm guessing that's right. So 
Basically what we did is we created this function and we used this return keyword and we returned back to the caller the value of cubing the number. And that's really cool. And actually, so we can make this a lot simpler so I could actually just get rid of this result variable and I could just straight up return num cubed and this is and this is going to do the same exact thing. So we should get the same answer. Yeah. So this can be uh, really awesome. And one thing I want to point out is this return keyword will actually break us out of the function. So if I came down here and I said like print F and I print it out like here, this actually this code is actually never going to get executed. So if I was to run my program, you'll notice that it's not printing out here. So that never gets printed out. In other words, this line of code down here, print F here, this never gets touched because when we use this return keyword, this breaks us out of the function. So whenever C sees this return keyword, it just exits the function and goes back uh, down here to the normal program. So just keep in mind that you can't really put any code after you use this return keyword because it will break you out of the function. And I actually want to talk to you guys about one more thing really quick. Um, you'll notice up here I'm creating my cube function above the main function. So I actually created this above here. And the reason that I did that was because if I was to move this down here below the main function and I try to run my program, you'll notice that we're getting an error over here. And actually, if we look at the error down here in the um, output, it says error conflicting types for cube. Now, essentially what's happening is when I create this function down here below this main method, when the main method over here tries to call it, it actually doesn't know about this function yet. Like it doesn't necessarily know like what this function is and what it's going to return and what parameters it's going to take because we created it after we created this uh, main method. So what I can do is actually something called prototyping. And when I prototype, it'll allow me to create this function below this main function without getting this error. And basically when you prototype, I'm basically just going to um, write out the function signature. So we would call this like the signature, basically um, the return type and the parameters and the name. So if I was to put this up here and put a semicolon, now when I run my program, you'll see that we're not getting this error anymore and we're actually getting the answer back. So this is a way that you can create functions below that main function without having any problems. And, you know, basically any functions that I created, I could put another prototype up there at the top and uh, it's going to be fine. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.